Okay, guys, uh, welcome to this session on uh, tooling for observability. Um, so I start by mentioning, so what is observability? So observability is a term that comes from control theory. So it basically mentions um, uh, figuring out the internal state of a system by checking its external outputs. So, so it's a measure of how well we can understand a system by uh, looking at how it works, basically. And uh, so, yeah, so one of the main questions is monitoring the same as observability. So uh, monitoring means basically uh, figuring out and checking whether a system is working as expected and checking how it works. So observability is uh, basically it's, it's just an attribute of the system, whether it's similar to like uh, maintainability, usability, and so on. It's, it's uh, telling whether if I can observe the system effectively, if it, it's a thing that you have. And uh, like monitoring is a thing you do. So it's two different levels of uh, usages of the words. So, that's the main difference on how you basically approach uh, the terms. Um, so uh, how do you get observability? So observability you uh, mainly get from instrumentation. So instrumentation is basically like aug augmenting your system uh, to give additional information uh, onto understanding uh, uh, the, the situation. So, so the more instrumentation you had, it, it becomes more observable. And uh, so in the same way, our WC2 products are uh, like observable with various tools that, are, uh, that we have. So uh, from various uh, approaches that we have uh, implemented. So uh, instrumentation can be done in two ways. So first is white box instrumentation and then black box instrumentation. So white box instrumentation means uh, from the design of your system, you bake in the uh, functionality to uh, get the information you need, like the events you need. You will basically code into the system. And from that, you will uh, get the information you need to observe the system. So uh, that's like uh, logging, API monitoring, tracing, and so on are implemented in that way. And then black box instrumentation is basically um, uh, looking at a system from a distance and figuring out like what's happening. So then you don't have any explicit code in your software to say that, but you basically use the use other uh, attributes like using the operating systems uh, like help to figure out whether the process is using this much of CPU, memory, network, and so on. So it's at a distance, figuring out how it works. Then um, I would like to talk about observability and availability. So uh, in the system, so uh, availability means, OK, how, how much of the time in the percentage that it's, the system is running. So uh, when you talk about, OK, I have like four nines availability and so on, is that the most important thing? So, the system may be running, but is it running correctly? So like the requests that are running in the system may be timing out, or it's not like uh, responding in the correct uh, manner, the correct results, and so on. Then uh, it's not what you expect. So uh, compared to that, if you have a very much more observable system, uh, then you can figure out whether the actual functioning uh, functionality is happening properly whether it's doing what it's intended to do, and if there are any problems. So, so always, when you have a system, it's good to have a, a, a better observability features uh, compared to availability, but basically you should have both in a balanced way. And uh, then uh, thinking about performance engineering, so um, observability also plays a critical part in that. Like, uh, if you want to debug a system on like uh, what are the performance bottlenecks you are having, uh, why is it not, we're not working in the way that expected, and so on, uh, you need to have a way to understand each part and see how it's working. So, uh, for example, um, 
nowadays people like to have always on observability in even in production systems. So in that way, uh, you'll always see what's going on, and it's easy to troubleshoot a problem when you have, like even with performance tuning and any other uh, aspects. It's easier to do that, like compared to the the, the slight performance drop you may have by uh, having the observability on always. So compared to that, having the ability to always see what's happening is much more beneficial. So uh, compared to the, like the other uh, slight, slight uh, performance and other uh, uh, the, the, the reductions you may get. So um, talking about observability, so we mainly talk about three aspects. We call them the three pillars of observability. So that is logging, matrix monitoring, and distributed tracing. So uh, logging basically means uh, like the discrete events that are happening in your system. Those are like, uh, like point information that will say, OK, something happened at this time with this information. So with some context information, you will just log some information. Uh, matrix monitoring is mainly uh, aggregated uh, event information. So things like um, the request counts, the, the latency, average latency, max, min, and so on. So those are the things that come under matrix monitoring. And then you have uh, distributed tracing. So distributed tracing is all about um, tracking the full flow of uh, requests. So to understand how a full request went through all the subsystems uh, in your in the full uh, uh, full uh, software system, uh, you will use distributed tracing. Then you can have an understanding, OK, this worked better, and this had, there are problems in this part, and so on. So that's the, that's the use of distributed tracing. So uh, let's look at some of the tools we can use for observability. So most of the tools are used in uh, WSRI itself, like we have had experience using these tools now on products and uh, deployments. So um, starting with logging, so a uh, very popular uh, uh, software system is the Elastic Stack. So it has a lot of uh, functionality starting from log retrieval, processing, indexing, and to visualize it has a whole stack that you can easily use. And then uh, metrics, so uh, we have two sections in that, application metrics and system metrics. So for application metrics, we have our own uh, WSRU Analytics server, uh, which can do uh, real-time predictive and uh, batch analytics. Uh, so that's used in our own uh, WSRU products as well, as a different profile. And also, like commercial uh, proprietary applications like AppDynamics, they also have uh, rich support for metrics. And then uh, system metrics, there are uh, other open source solutions like Izinga uh, that we ourselves use. And uh, for cloud scenarios, uh, we also use like CloudWatch. And then uh, distributed tracing, uh, again, AppDynamics can be used in that scenario also. And uh, also our WC Analytics server, which is, uh, uh, again, uh, open tracing provider also. And other open tracing vendors like uh, Zipkin, Jaeger, and all any supported uh, products can be used for that uh, use case as well. So let's look at these separate sections uh, a bit more in detail. So logging, so happens via uh, white box instrumentation, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, in logging, basically, again, as I said, it's about uh, having discrete events on what's happening at a specific point and uh, the type of event and the severity. Like you can say, OK, I'm putting some debug information, or oh, I got some error in this severity, and so on. So, and also with that, you will provide some contextual information on to see, OK, what has happened. So later on, you can use a log processing tool and see, OK, uh, what are the issues that have happened earlier, and so on. So you can create some correlations, and so on, uh, after like uh, some further processing. So for this, uh, logging with uh, this white box instrumentation can be used. And uh, so, so looking at the Elastic Stack on what they do, 
for these uh, logging um, uh, operations. So they have a, 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 a layered approach. So starting from log retrieval, they have these bits they use. Those are agents that are used to extract the logs in the raw format. Like, for example, they have file bits, which basically just reads the files and forward it to another layer. Uh, so basically, where they forward it is basically to log stash, where log stash is basically a log uh, uh, processing uh, tool where it can filter, format uh, the data, uh, then to be sent out to an indexing system. So um, this is where Elasticsearch comes in. So that's where you store and index the data that you get from uh, Logstash. And after that, the finally, the step is to visualize the uh, data. Uh, that's done by Kibana. So this is basically run some queries against Elasticsearch and visualize uh, the data uh, either in a table format or in uh, like uh, graphical dashboards. So that's how the Elastic stack works. Uh, this is a, a small diagram on how the system works. Like uh, in your software systems, you will just install the agents, uh, the, the beats, for example, in your uh, in a containerized system, uh, another one container would be the beats that will be uh, forwarding the logs to another subsystem, which will have the elastic stack, starting from log stash, do the indexing, and finally uh, visualize it using Kibana. So these are some of the uh, uh, <clears throat> screenshots in action. So you can see the raw logs. Uh, you can search with the queries and some dashboards can create. So then uh, we move into matrix monitoring. Uh, so I mentioned our own solution, WS2 Analytics Server, what it can do. So uh, it has mainly uh, the real-time analytics uh, that is used uh, for uh, consuming our own, own events from uh, API manager, EI, uh, identity server, and so on. So And also we have support for integrating with predictive analytics and batch analytics as well. So from this, we extract metrics and do alerting, and again, also support querying for the dashboards as well. So some of the metrics monitored by our analytics server. So for uh, API manager, we have uh, request response, uh, false, and so on, the statistics, how much uh, calls have gone through, the, for, uh, the things that have failed, the latencies, availability, and so on. And also, uh, something extra that's available in the enterprise integrator is uh, we have a flow view of all the requests that goes through the ESB sequences. Like, up to the mediator level, we can uh, like drill in and see the messages. Like, in each uh, node, mediator level, we can see the time it takes to process. Uh, the input and output messages, and so on. So you can go to that level of uh, uh, drilling in uh, that is supported using the analytics server. So you can see some of these in action. So in the API manager, we have these dashboards and uh, uh, the wizards that you can configure the analytics. And then in EI, uh, we have these uh, dashboards like for the matrix, uh, and also you can see um, the, the, the flows in action uh, for the sequences. So again, then uh, let's move on to AppDynamics, which is the proprietary product, which also have uh, matrix uh, support. Uh, they basically have uh, three types of uh, agents. So the app agents, the uh, standalone machine agents and database agents. So that page agents basically run in process in extracting the, the matrix uh, from the running programs. Uh, external machine agents basically run separately in the separate pro process and uh, looks at the process and gathers some uh, system level metrics. And then a database agent basically gathers information about the database queries, database information. So uh, AppDynamics is available as, a, as an uh, on-premise or a SaaS uh, uh, level access also. So you can deploy it in either way. 
so yeah, so the matrix that can be monitored by AppDynamics, again, somewhat similar to the, our analytics server, uh, that's the request responsible application level uh, matrix, and also the system matrix, such as the JVM uh, uh, level information and operating system level information that you can get. <clears throat> this is a quick uh, uh, diagram of how AppDynamics uh, in action. And also for system metrics, um, you have AWS CloudWatch. So especially if you have uh, software and systems running in uh, AWS, you can uh, get a lot of uh, system level metrics using CloudWatch. So about your EC2 instances, services, and the events that are triggering from that, you can configure alerts, and everything can be done using AWS CloudWatch. So anything that's running in AWS, uh, this is a very easy to use service. So you can see the uh, preview of the CloudWatch dashboard that will give all this information. Then uh, we have Izinga, so that's a, uh, it's an open source software which you can uh, 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 install on premise uh, to get uh, system level uh, metrics again, like disk user load average, any operating system level information, also you can use Izinga. So we ourselves use it in our uh, public cloud and uh, in uh, our managed cloud as well. So let's move into uh, distributed tracing. Um, again, distributed tracing is supporting now analytics server, uh, WC Analytics server. We are an open tracing compatible provider. So uh, how the distributed tracing basically work is, um, when you have requests flowing through your system, so you have different subsystem nodes and so on. So the first time the request comes into the system, we will create a unique ID of, to that flow, and uh, we will inject that to the first message that goes out of the system. Then after that, when it's propagated through all the nodes, we will uh, propagate that ID, the correlation ID that was created, and propagate to all the nodes. And from that, when the nodes are sending messages to the centralized servers, we will be sending that correlation ID as well. So later on, when we want to check all the flows, it's uh, just a matter of grouping all the messages with that correlation ID. So then we will get all the uh, messages in flows, and you can inspect them as needed. So uh, this uh, function is there in EI and our API manager solutions. So any messages that goes through API manager EI and other compatible uh, uh, software, you can see the full flow and visualize that uh, in our dashboards. So this is a, 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 a screenshot of the analytics server message flow we have. So you can see here, so each sequence, each uh, uh, hop, we visualize it in, uh, as, uh, in a diagram. And when you click a node, we will show all the, the properties that are available in each message, like the message can have properties, the body, and so on. <clears throat> so again, uh, distributed tracing, AppDynamics also have the same or similar functionality, where it also follows the same mechanism in uh, visualizing the flows in your system. So uh, distributed tracing. Uh, Again, it's supported by our own WStream processor. Again, an uh, uh, operating uh, uh, supported uh, provider. And also others like Jaeger and Sipkin are also supported as well. So if you have any open tracing supported provider, that uh, anything can be uh, plugged into the products. And it will basically uh, uh, work, uh, work in your scenario. So. Um, so the future improvements we are going to do with uh, distributed tracing is uh, we will be in integrating orbit tracing for all our products that we have, uh, like uh, Identity Server and other products that we have. We'll be having support for that. So all our products will be supporting open tracing. And as I said, again, uh, any open tracing pro uh, supported provider can be used to interface with the products as well. So. We have gone with the standards route, and uh, so in that way, you don't have to 
stick to the single provider, but you can select the more suitable option uh, uh, as you please. So uh, yeah, in con conclusion, so what I just explained is uh, the, the importance of observability. It's always better to have an observable system uh, in figuring out the actual inner workings, and, easy to, and it'll in turn make it easy to debug and tune new applications. And um, again, observability is provided through the logging, matrix monitoring, and distributed tracing. And um, so at the end, our own W0 products can be observed using the, 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 the W0 analytics server and the open source software products that are out there. So um, yes, <clears throat> um, hope this session was uh, useful for you guys. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, Elasticsearch on prem. Yeah. Yeah, you can have your own installation and set it up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I was wondering if uh, you have a built in plugin to send uh, logs directly to Elastic. Is that, is that possible now? Directly to, to 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 the Elastic Search instead of using file bit and log stash, just send it directly yeah. to Elastic. Uh, we'll be using the same file bits and so on. So, yes, I yeah. actually built I actually built all that stack for the Lasso two, mm -hmm. but I was wondering because we use Spring Boot as well on our on our team, and mm -hmm. Spring Boot actually has a plugin that you can use and send directly the send the logs directly to Elastic without using file bit and log stash. Ah, okay. Uh, we don't actually have that at the moment. Uh, so we use existing features to read our log files and send it to uh, Elasticsearch. And yeah. On, OK. On the same topic, have you built um, a plugin to actually log structured logs, like uh, JSON, right, right away? Instead of just common lines, send, uh, sending logs as yeah. structured, JSON, for example? Um, because file bit and, yeah. and, and log stash like to, to consume stretchers logs, so you can actually see the parameters on the elastic search and it's it's better for for for, for backtracing and, and monitoring and yeah. analyze, analyzing. We haven't done anything like that yet to log in other formats. So we use log4j internally, so we are still sticking with that format. So unless log4j has any special appenders that can do uh, logging as JSON, we haven't done anything special to do that ourselves. Because I actually did a plugin with a custom mediator from the LSO2 Enterprise Integrated to actually do that type of thing, and I was wondering if you already done it so I could use yours. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, we haven't. Sorry? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> so what you can do is you can contribute back to us. So yeah, we haven't done anything at that in that level, so yeah. We will welcome any contributions. <laughs> One last question uh, regarding distributed, distributed tracing. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering about the Boston 2 Analytics server. Can you trigger something to configure something to actually see the, the body of the requests and responses? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So in uh, EA and so on, so it's an option, optional field. Uh, you can configure saying whether to send the body or not. So if you configure it as, as such, it will send the body as well. So obviously, there will be a performance hit in that way. Like It will take much more time to send that also. So we, we do send it efficiently. We batch it and send it together. But still, obviously, it will take more space, more time to transfer, and so on. But it's a configura configurable property that's there that you can send the body also. OK, thank you. Yep, no problem.